Hey, this is Dr. Fast here, and this is video number two for the installation of the remote starter system in this 2008 Honda Odyssey. As you can see, these are the wiring harnesses you saw earlier in video number one. So let's get started, and I'll show you how to install everything into the vehicle. So let's first remove the side cover. Now we'll remove this lower dashboard cover. There's a Phillips screw here. And all around here there will be clips holding this panel in. After taking a closer look at this, I don't think I need to completely remove this. It's also very difficult because on this far edge of this panel, it's actually behind the lower trim panel here. So there's a lot of stuff that I need to take off to get this one piece off. I want to work on getting the steering column cover off here as all the accessory and power wire is behind here. So there are two Phillips screw here. There's one also behind this lever that you need to remove. So I turned the steering wheel to this position, giving me access to the front edge, and got myself a flat blade screwdriver, and just carefully pry open the top half from the bottom half. So right below the steering column, you see this brown connector with the heavy gauge wires. This is going to provide your constant power, starter wire, ignition, and accessory wires. And we're going to tap the alarm wires onto these wires. So here is my alarm wiring. I ran it up following the uh, factory loom. And first one I'm going to test is going to be the constant 12 volt. So this white wire should be the constant 12. If I put my probe on here measures 12.3 that's correct and for my alarm I'm going to need to connect two constant power to the red white and the red so I'm going to do that right now What I'm doing here is going to wrap it and solder it. Make sure the solder flows all the way through. Once that's cooled down, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Wrap it up really good so it'll be insulated. The next one we'll do is going to be the starter wire. The starter wire should be a black white. If you look here, this is the black white. And test it. The starter wire should only give you 12 volt when it's cranking. So zero volt right now. Ignition, nothing. We'll crank. 12. Once I let go, it's zero. So it only gives you 12 volt when it's cranking. So we know that is the starter wire.
And again, we'll tape this up. Now we're going to do the ignition. The ignition wire should be the black yellow right here. And the ignition will give you 12 volt right there. That's ignition, 12 volt. I'm going to crank it also. And when you crank it, it's going to have 12 volt. And after cranking, it's going to give you also 12 volt. But once you turn it off, it will be back to zero. So that's ignition. And on the alarm, I'm going to connect the blue, which is the ignition wire, to the black yellow right here. So let's go ahead and test the accessory one. Zero volt right now. Ignition on. 12 volt. Crank. The difference with accessory wire is that when you crank, it goes to zero. After it cranks, it goes back to 12. Whereas the ignition wire is 12 volt all the way through. And we can go ahead and test the white red wire, the accessory number two. Zero volt right now. Goes to 12 volt. When I crank, goes zero. When I let go, goes back to 12. So that's accessory number two. And for this vehicle, you need to connect both of them. And accessory one is gonna go to the purple wire. And the accessory two is gonna go to the green wire, but it needs to be programmed on the alarm to know that it's accessory wire. So all the wires are connected now. I didn't bother showing you the last two because it's the same procedure. Um, cut open the insulation, tap it, solder it. So right now all those wires are connected and I'll just clean up a little bit. I'll tape it up so it'll look a little better. I'm going to tie wrap this bundle of wire along the factory loom and make sure it's not in the way of the steering column or any of the moving uh, components at the back. So let me show you something. I was looking for the parking light wire and according to the wiring sheet I have there is a parking light positive and parking light negative trigger. If you look at the parking light negative trigger it says that it is a red black wire on the headlight switch in the steering column. So I was digging around here and I did find a red black wire coming down from the headlight switch and when I tested it instead of being negative like the sheet says it gave me 12 volt. It's a 12 volt trigger. So this is something that I want to show you because it is important, very important that you test all the wires before connecting it up. You can't just look at this sheet and you know blindly connect everything up according to the sheet and I'm not saying this sheet is wrong. Perhaps maybe there is another wire, let's say in the back or running down another uh, bundle of wire that might be a negative trigger. But if you don't check it and you assume, then problem will occur. You're gonna hook this up and you're gonna find things that don't work right or worst case is that you might damage something in the car's computer. So now that I've found the parking light wire, I'm gonna carefully splice open this wire You want to be careful, you don't damage this or cut this in half. And then we'll tap the alarm wire for the parking light onto this wire.
So the next wire we need to locate will be the brake switch wire. And if you look up here, following the brake pedal, there is a connector here. And the wire we need for this one is going to be white with black stripe. So we'll test that wire to make sure when you press the pedal, it will actually give out 12 volt on that wire. So here I've attached the probe from my multimeter onto that white wire. And when I press the brake, it goes to 12 volt. So that's the wire we need. So I've just gone ahead and disconnected the connector. It'll be easier to access those wires. I open up the split loom here, and then I'll just go ahead and tap the wire I need onto this white with black stripe wire. That'll give me 12 volt for the brake. Now we'll plug that connector back in here and we'll just carefully route this wire away from all the moving parts. For the ground, I'm going to connect this right onto the bolt right here. I tested it with a multimeter, it is a good ground. So all I need to do is put a ring terminal on this. So for the siren, as you can see, the wire is not very long, so I'm extending the wire and I soldered this end with uh, heat shrink on it and then I'm going to tape up the rest of it so from the engine bay, when you're looking at it, all you can see is the black wire. To get the siren wire into the vehicle, let me show you. There is a grommet, a rubber grommet, way back here. Right there. And what you need to do is carefully use a knife to cut a little slit on the side. And then here I have the siren wire taped up to a co hanger. And we'll just carefully poke this through and feed it into the vehicle. So, right above the gas pedal, you can see here the wires come through. And we'll just pull this all the way out and route this wire up top here away from all these moving parts. Here I have the siren wire coming out here and then this is going to be the ones connecting to the control module, the brain of the alarm. I'm going to use these butt connectors and connect this up. So let me show you where I mounted the siren. Right here behind the air box and you can see the two self-tapping screws I used and then the wire runs along the factory loom into the vehicle. I'm going to install the antenna, valet switch and LED combo, this module here, right in this spot. First I'm going to clean the window and then on the back of this antenna combo here, remove the 3M backing tape and I'm going to mount it right up against here so that you don't see any of the wire. Apply pressure and hold it for about a minute. Now we'll tuck the wire above the headliner. And then there's this plug here on the A pillar. Go ahead and carefully pry this out. Go ahead and remove this. And we'll run the wire along this factory wire loom here. So now all you have to do is fish this wire through the A-pillar here and it'll come out at the bottom under the driver's dash. I've put the cover back on and then put the plug back in. Put the weather stripping back on here. I just finished installing the shock sensor and all I did here was mounted 
the shock sensor onto an existing uh, wire harness using uh, tie wraps. Just tie it up to that area. And also you want to make sure that this is a location where you can access because you need to set the sensitivity on the adjuster that's on the front of this shock sensor. And then I ran the wire to the top and then back down to the alarm module right here.